Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. I had to take a trip from Phoenix up to Las Vegas and I rode the bike up there. Now, I had this kind of planned out. I knew I was going to go, but part of living in Phoenix is you start to lose touch with weather. In the last few months here, it's basically been 50s, 60s throughout the day and gets down to upper 30s, 40s at night. On Thursday, the day before I left, I was on my way back from a job site behind a tractor trailer and I saw it dropping water. So I moved over and as I'm getting around this truck, I see ice on the bottom of it. And then it kind of dawned on me that, oh yeah, when you leave Phoenix, it gets cold kind of quick. So as soon as I saw that tractor trailer, I decided I needed to stop at Cycle Gear and pick up heated gear. Actually, these gloves came from JP Cycles. I had to make two stops to kind of put it all together. Now, I ended up spending $531.67 between the shoe liners, the pants, the jacket, and the gloves or the glove liners that I bought, again, $531. Now, when I paid for all of this, it was 20% off at the time of purchase. So that played a huge part in it. And I just decided to round the whole thing out. Now, I would normally never spend that kind of money on something like heated gear. I would just layer up and go. I wasn't really sure if it was going to be worth it. Uh, I kind of decided that it's probably worth the purchase for me. This is the SAE adapter that goes into the uh, uh, battery tender. So it makes it very easy to just plug this in, plug that into the tender. And there's enough lead here on the cable that when you get off the bike, you can stand up at a red light if you set it up appropriately. Uh, but when you get off at a gas pump and forget that it's there because you will forget every single time, it just pulls out real quick. However, it does have enough tension that it stays engaged while riding. I never had it come unhooked when I didn't want it to, except for one time. And that's what I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, but Again, I wanted to make a video talking about this simply because this stuff was absolutely amazing. So I started riding and I got to Wickenburg, or just outside of Wickenburg. So figure about an hour or so. And as I was riding, I had it on the low setting and I wasn't really sure if it was working. Well, I got to a red light at Wickenburg. And a lot of times if I get to a red light, I'll just stand up to kind of stretch my legs. I had this kind of wrapped around my leg somewhat weird. So when I got up, it just disconnected. So I reached down, reconnect it, super easy, turn everything back on. And as I start riding down the road, I'm like, man, I'm cold. So I look down, what you have here is a, a button that as you push it, you can kind of do it out of view, but you have red, which is the hottest. And then you go to yellow, medium and green, which is the lowest. You have this same setup on the pants as well. I'll get into the total amp draw and all that in a moment, but that is the problem that I ran into is I looked down and I saw both of these were off. Immediately I realized I blew a fuse and now I'm in the middle of nowhere and I'm getting cold. I realize I'm cold and there is nothing I can do. So I had to ride for probably a good half hour to get to the first gas station. And when I got to that gas station, they did not sell the smaller fuses. They sold, sold the, I guess, old school, larger blade fuses. So I realized, well, I'm gonna have to carry on down the road a little bit longer uh, until I can find another gas station to stop at. That's when I realized this stuff is awesome. It dropped down to below 50 degrees. And I'll tell you, when you are doing 80, 85 miles an hour, uh, it gets cold and it gets cold quick. When I opened up the bike, I saw that Harley Davidson has a seven and a half amp fuse. So right off the bat, I know people are going to say, oh, you never upsize the fuse because that's what causes fires and uh, you would be correct. However, if you look at the hot wired uh, manual, it will tell you which fuses you should substitute in there into that SAE connector that comes on the bike. Now, seven and a half amps is really, really low. And with that, it's mainly because from the factory, they're only putting in what is absolutely necessary uh, for that connector to do what they put it on there for, which is to put a charge uh, to the bike. I would recommend going with the smallest fuse that you possibly can. Uh, it's always better to keep it uh, smaller so you don't create electrical fire issues. So I upgraded mine to a 10 amp fuse and I continued to ride for, well, the rest of the way there, which would have been about three and a half hours. And then the way home, almost about five hours. I also took it out yesterday on a ride and I was using it for another three or four hours about. Uh, so I've got quite a bit of riding with this hot wired gear. And I will tell you, it is an absolute game changer. 
Uh, I was riding up into areas yesterday where there was actually snow on the ground. So I left here, it was 65. And by the time I returned here, it was actually 80. But when you leave Phoenix, you get up into the mountains, it was down into low 40s with snow on the ground. And I, I will tell you guys what, the heated gear conversation for $530 uh, that I spent, if you're going to be riding in colder weather, absolutely no brainer. This stuff works and it works incredibly well. Uh, now the boot liners, I stood there at the store and I struggled over, I want to say it was 70 bucks for the boot liners. And I almost stopped at that saying, that's absurd. I can just go buy some of those hot hands, heat warmers, toss those in my boots and be fine. Um, I probably looked at those things for 20 minutes before I decided to pull the trigger. And I decided I'm already down the rabbit hole. It's literally the last thing I need to complete this whole heated ensemble. Uh, just pull the trigger. Super happy that I did. To get back to the amp draw, the uh, the amp draw on this gear, 13.8, 13.7 volts with the amp draw from nine amps to spiking at 11.3 is what I'm seeing, which uh, I did that with the 10 amp fuse, never blew it. And I honestly was usually riding at most on medium. The amp draw is hovering between 5.7 and spiking to 10. Now on its lowest setting, we are amp draw of four to up oh, three, three amps to with spikes to seven amps, which again, this is where I pretty much rode most of my trip with. And again, 13.8 volts. So that 10 amp fuse is probably still slightly undersized, but uh, if I'm not blowing fuses, I'll leave it at that. I do have extra fuses if need be. And uh, I don't know, let me know in the comments down below. I am certainly not an electrical engineer by no means, uh, but I do understand you wanna keep your fuses as low as you can. So with that being said, guys, I think this hot wired stuff is awesome. I will link it in the description down below if you're interested. I always say in these reviews is in the affiliate marketing game that uh, it's only valuable to me if you buy it and keep it. If you buy it and return it because I misled you, well then I don't get anything out of it and it's just kind of exchanging my reputation for the sake of uh, looking like I'm getting a sale that turns into a return that is, it's just not beneficial for anybody uh, in, in terms of my long game here on the platform. I wanna be a trusted source of, of information and uh, I'm not here to steer anybody wrong. So this was an interesting one for me because heated gear is something I would never in a million years spend the money on. It's just not a me thing uh, to do. I think it's awesome. And I'm happy that I bought it because now I have it where when I'm going to these events, uh, even people that were at the event were like, man, a lot of people flew there because it was cold or, or drove there. And for me, it's like, look, if I'm gonna create content around uh, talking about a helmet and it's within a five hour ride for me to uh, to get there, I really had a hard time not riding. So buying the gear was an investment for me, which allows me to continue to put out content on this channel riding through the winter months uh, because it's not snowing here. So uh, interesting, I think this stuff is great. If you're a long distance tour, I think back to when I rode uh, back out to the Bring It Home event uh, out at Adam Sandoval's place and put on 2,500 miles. I had the rain gear, but I still, you know, the feet got wet and, and once you get wet and cold, it just sucks. It absolutely sucks riding uh, cold and especially when it's chilly. So to have that heated gear to just put a little warmth back in your body can really go a long way. Uh, anybody who's spent time on their bike and got to that point where you start shivering, not like uh, a cold like jaw shiver, but an actual like whole body shiver as you're riding, knows that once you get that chilled to the bone like that, it's very difficult to uh, get out at best and at worst, potentially dangerous, uh, can be hypothermic and things like that. So I'm a big fan and let me know in the comments down below, was this something that you guys would ever consider buying? Uh, I do know that the reason why all of the reviews are so good on this stuff, if you read it online, uh, I now understand because it is truly that awesome. So with that being said, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. Again, affiliate links uh, down in the description down below. So I'll check you guys on the next one.